In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get your LEGO Spike Prime robot to detect the edge of a big drop. For example, having a robot on a table, it's going to be able to detect the edge of that table and stop itself from actually falling to its death. Okay, so we're going to be using the color sensor to do that. And instead of sensing for a color, we're going to make the color sensor look for natural light. And when it spots that natural light, which is no color, it will know to stop and reverse up and go in a different direction. Okay, we're going to be using Python code to get this working. So let's get started now by jumping over to the Lego Education Spike app. We're going to make ourselves a new project and we'll call it um, Detecting Edges. That'll do. And we'll use Python and click on Create. Now minimize the knowledge base and console like usual, get rid of the code that's already there, zoom in as far as you can go and make sure you connect your robot. Now I haven't connected mine yet so I'll quickly connect that via Bluetooth. And we are now good to go with our coding. So to start with today we are going to only import two things. So from the Spike library, we are going to import the motor pair like we usually do. And just the color sensor today. Now once we've got that done, we will initialize the motors and the color sensor. So we'll start with our movement motors. Why give them the name movement motors? You can call them whatever you want. Movement motors equals motor pair and just tell the computer what ports your movement motors are plugged into. So mine are plugged into A and B, written as B and A though if you want your robot to move forward. And our default speed today needs to be very slow. I'll explain why in just a moment. So movement motors dot set default speed. I'm going to put it at 20%. You could probably bump it up to 25 or 30% if you wanted to, but I'd probably leave it at 20% just to be safe. Now, the reason we make our robot slow today is because as the robot's navigating around a table, for example, we don't want it to go 100% speed at the edge of the table because it won't have time to stop itself from falling off the edge. But if your robot is moving nice and slow, towards the edge of a table, it gives it time to spot the edge and then pull up before it actually topples off. So we want to be moving at a very slow speed today. I wouldn't go over 20% um, unless you've got somebody there ready to catch the robot. Yeah, keep it at 20%. Uh, now that we've got the speed set up, the other thing we need to do is just initialize the color sensor. So I'm going to call my color sensor color today. And color equals color sensor and whoops, port D we are plugged into with our color sensor. All right, so we've got everything set up there. Next thing we are going to do is simply get our robot to move forward. So movement motors dot start. We'll get our robot moving forward continuously. It doesn't have an end to it, that little line of code. So our robot will always be driving forward. Now the next line of code we haven't used before, I don't think, it is going to be accessing the color sensor. So we bring in the color sensor first of all by writing color. And the function we're going to use here is called wait underscore until underscore color. Now color spelled the American way there. This function here, wait until color, is basically using our color sensor and it's going to wait until the color sensor spots a particular color. In this case, we're not looking for a color, we're looking for natural light. So we have to write the word none in brackets. So we're going to be waiting until our color sensor spots or senses no color. And when that happens, then we run the next line of code. And the next line of code is basically to stop. So movement motors dot stop. So when our um, robot senses no color, that means he's hit the edge of the table and he can sense that natural light beneath him. So he needs the movement motors to stop him at that point so he doesn't go any further and topple off the edge. It's probably a good idea to put some um, comments in here now. So, whoops, when natural light or no color is detected, 
will stop moving. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, now, we might add a little bit more code to this. Um, what we're going to do, once we do get to the edge of our table, what I want him to do is actually back up a little bit so he doesn't drive off it. So, let's do movement motors dot move. And we'll just back it up a little way, maybe 10 centimeters. Um, that's what we need for that one. I'll put in a little comment that says reverse. And the final line of code, what we're going to do is get him to turn around a little bit so he's facing a new direction and he can keep exploring that table. So, movement motors dot, and we'll use the move tank function here. Remember the move tank function allows us to spin on the spot. So I'm going to get him to spin 8 centimeters, which is just a little spin. Oops. And I'm going to put in the two different speeds to the left motor and the right motor. So the left speed first is going to be equal to 100. And then the right speed will be equal to minus 100. And if we want to put in a comment there, we'll just say spin around to a new, oops, to face a new direction. All right, now the last thing I want to put in here is an endless loop, sorry. So up in this little gap here, um, in line seven, I'm just going to make another line and write while true and put a colon. And everything beneath that while true, we're going to highlight and indent by pressing tab on our keyboard, which just pushes everything across a little bit to show that these are the lines of code we want running forever as part of this endless loop. Okay, so we just recap on our code here. Our robot is going to start by driving forward. He'll keep driving forward until he spots no color. Once he spots no color, the movement motors are going to stop. So he stops moving. He's going to back it up 10 centimeters. And then he's going to turn around and face a new direction. And then that's going to loop around as part of the endless loop and start from scratch again. So he'll start driving and just keep driving until he spots no color again and that just keeps going on and on and on forever until you stop the program okay so it's a fairly simple program today uh, it's worth giving it a test run now to see if we have got it all working All right, so my little guy was working pretty well then, so hopefully yours was as well. So just a short and simple video today. Um, I will, actually, was there anything new that we needed to cover there? There wasn't really much new apart from this wait until color, none. That was the only real function that was new to us today. So just be aware if you're looking for natural light or no color, then the word none is what you should be using. Okay, so I'll leave it at that and I will see you in the next video.